Ukraine's military says it has killed more than 100 Russian soldiers in the southern region of Kherson, the focus of its counteroffensive. It also said that two ammunition dumps and seven tanks had been destroyed in the region on Friday. It comes as the United Nations and the Red Cross have been asked to investigate the deaths of more than 50 Ukrainian prisoners of war. They were killed where they were being held at the detention center in the Russian-occupied part of the Donetsk region. These are pictures of the rocket attack, which is thought to have led to prisoners' deaths. Ukraine and Russia have accused each other of carrying out the attack. Ukraine says Moscow is trying to cover up evidence of torture and war crimes at the site. President Zelensky gave this reaction to the attack in his nightly address to the Ukrainian people. I've received reports about the attack in the Donetsk region. It was a deliberate Russian war crime, a deliberate mass murder of Ukrainian prisoners of war, more than 50 dead. When the defenders of the Azov style left the plant, the UN and the International Committee of the Red Cross acted as guarantors of the life and health of our soldiers. Let's speak now to our correspondent Paul Adams in Kyiv. Um, and I just called it a rocket attack, actually, in that introduction. But we don't actually even know that, do we, Paul? Talk, talk us through what's known about this. No, you make a good point. Nothing about this is clear at all. It was the Russians who said that this was a rocket attack, a Ukrainian rocket attack, uh, using sophisticated American-supplied rockets, but hitting a, t a, a building full of Ukrainian prisoners of war. Frankly, it's, a, it's a, a, an explanation that beggars belief, and I don't think really anyone uh, among Western observers uh, is really setting much store by this. The uh, British ambassador here in Kiev issued a tweet this morning in which she made it fairly clear, without directly pointing the finger at the Russians, that she thought this was part of a pattern of human rights abuses and possible war crimes in occupied eastern Ukraine. So I think that there is a, I think there's a general assumption among Western observers that the Ukrainian explanation, which is that this was something engineered by Russia or Russian-backed separatists, is more likely but we still don't know because no one has yet been granted access to the site. No one has been able to investigate it. No one independent has been able to investigate it. Just in the last few minutes, we heard that the Ukrainians have already initiated the process of trying to get the bodies back. The Russians this morning have published a list of those people who it says were killed in this attack, most of whom do seem to be, we think, from that Azov battalion, the battalion that was responsible for holding out in the steelworks in Mariupol until May. How likely is it that Russia would grant any kind of access, do you think? I think very reluctantly and possibly not at all. Uh, the Red Cross may get access because the Red Cross will want to check that those people who survived, who we've seen pictures of in hospitals in nearby Donetsk, are being properly looked after. They will have been concerned, for example, at the spectacle of a video released overnight in which some of those survivors who were clearly traumatized were being quizzed by Russians about uh, what had happened, uh, being asked to confirm that this was a uh, involved uh, American-made uh, rockets and so forth. Just Conducting an interview like that represents a breach of the Geneva Convention. So there's plenty for the Red Cross to, to go and find out about whether they will have the opportunity to get to the scene, to establish the facts of what happened. Well, I'm, frankly, I'm a little doubtful. Yeah. And well, meanwhile, Ukraine's military says that it's killed more than 100 Russian soldiers in the southern region of Kherson, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, so this is very much a focus of uh, Ukrainian attention at the moment, trying to squeeze that pocket uh, around the city of Kherson, the first city that was taken by the Russians uh, back at the beginning of this war. They've been hitting bridges, connecting that pocket to other parts of Russian-controlled territory. Uh, they just announced uh, today that they hit a railway bridge, which is also another key link, all designed to try and isolate those Russian troops. And they say, as you mentioned, that they're hitting them hard. I should say that every day brings these sorts of claim and counterclaim. There was a statement from the Russians a short time ago saying that a couple of days ago they killed 130 elite Ukrainian troops on board a train over in the, Do in the, uh, in the Donbass. So, you know, we, we do hear these competing claims from the two warring parties. And for the most part, we're not in a great position to verify any of it. OK, well, thank you very much for, for talking us through all of that. Uh, that's Paul Adams for us there in Kyiv.